Getting your product through FCC certification can feel really overwhelming. You're not sure what test you need, how much it's going to cost, or even when to start thinking about it. And worst of all, you don't find out if you mess something up until you're already at the lab, or worse yet, you've failed certifications. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through 10 clear steps that will help you avoid delays, prevent expensive retests, and get your product certified as smoothly as possible. And if you're certifying your product outside the U.S., the same process still applies. Most other countries have their own regulations, but the steps are pretty similar. Hi, I'm John Teal. I'm a former microchip design engineer who brought my own product to market, and now I help others do the same. Step number one is to classify your product. So the first thing you need to figure out is how the FCC classifies your product. There are three main categories. We have intentional radiators, unintentional radiators, and non-radiators. Anything that includes wireless communication like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, LoRa, Zigbee, or cellular is considered an intentional radiator. If it doesn't have a radio but still has electronics like a microcontroller or USB or anything with a clock above 9 kilohertz, well, then it's an unintentional radiator. Now, if your product doesn't have anything at all oscillating above 9 kilohertz, not even a low-speed clock or a switching regulator, then it's considered a non-radiator, and in that case, you don't need any certification at all. But, unfortunately, that almost never happens in real products, and pretty much anything with a processor or digital interface falls into one of the first two categories. If you'd like to know exactly which certifications your product needs and what they're going to cost, I've built a certification estimator tool that figures it out for you. You just answer a few quick questions and it tells you which certifications apply and gives you a cost estimate. You're going to find the link in the description below or you can scan this QR code. Step number two is choose your certification path. There are two main paths to FCC compliance. We have SDOC and full certification. So SDOC stands for Supplier's Declaration of Conformity, and it's basically a self-declaration process. You still have to test your product, but you don't have to file anything at all with the FCC, and you don't get an FCC ID. You just keep your test results and the documentation on file and include a short compliance statement in your user manual. And that's pretty much it. The FCC won't even really know your product exists unless someone files a complaint. Full certification is required if you've got a custom radio design. That means you're not using a pre-certified wireless module. You're building your own custom RF section from a bare chip with a matching network and your own antenna. In that case, you'll need testing at an FCC-recognized lab and the results get submitted to the FCC for approval. Once you're approved, you'll get an FCC ID and you'll need to label your product with this ID. If you're using a pre-certified module, on the other hand, and you follow the manufacturer's layout and antenna guidelines, you can usually skip the full FCC certification. You might still be considered an intentional radiator, but you don't need to test the radio again, and you can often just go through the supplier's declaration of conformity process for the overall product just like if it was a non-intentional radiator. Step three, find the FCC rules that apply to your product. Once you know your product type and which path you're on, the next step is figuring out which FCC rules apply to your product. Most products fall under Part 15, which covers both intentional and un unintentional radiators. If you're building something like a wireless charger or an induction heater or a device for industrial or medical use, well, then you might fall under Part 18 instead. You'll also need to know if your product's Class A or Class B. So Class A is for commercial products and industrial products, and Class B is for consumer products used in homes. So Class B limits are much stricter, so if you're selling to consumers, plan for that early. Knowing your FCC rule category and class affects everything that follows, including what limits apply, what tests you'll need, and what documentation is required. Step four, plan for pre-compliance testing. One of the smartest things you can do is run pre-compliance testing before heading to a formal lab for full certification testing. You can use a low-cost lab or even set up some basic in-house testing if you have the necessary equipment. The goal is to catch problems early while they're still cheap and easy to fix. 
You might spot a noisy power supply, a leaky enclosure, unshielded cables, or a layout mistake that you didn't even realize was there. Pre-compliance testing helps you avoid getting blindsided at the lab, and it keeps you from wasting money on a failed test. So step five is designed for compliance because good layout practices are everything. Keep high-speed traces short, use solid ground planes, add decoupling near noisy ICs, and filter your power supply lines. Watch for long return paths that can radiate noise like an antenna. And if you're using a wireless module, follow the manufacturer's antenna layout exactly. If you've got a switching power supply, check for conducted noise on the input lines. And think about your enclosure too. Plastic and metal behave very differently when it comes to shielding. Don't treat shielding as an afterthought. You need to design with it in mind from day one. Step six is to get an expert design review. Even if you've been designing PCBs for years, it's easy to miss something. We all make mistakes. Trust me, I know. That's why it's worth getting an independent design review before you build a test-ready prototype. A second set of eyes, especially someone who's seen plenty of FCC failures, can catch layout issues or grounding mistakes or antenna problems before they cost you time and money. This one step alone can save you weeks and thousands of dollars, and it's cheaper to fix these issues now than after you've built a full production board. Step number seven, choose a test lab. Next up, it's time to pick your lab. If you're going through full FCC certification, you'll need an FCC recognized lab. But if you're doing just this SDOC process, you still need a capable lab that can run the right test and produce valid reports, but you won't need to be an FCC recognized lab, so they'll typically be cheaper. Be sure you ask about lead times, pricing, and what happens if something fails. Will they let you fix it on the spot, or do you have to pay for a full retest? These are great questions to ask before you've committed to a lab. And look for a lab that's tested similar products to yours before. A team that's familiar with your type of design can usually guide you through the process more efficiently. Step eight, prepare everything for the lab. You'll need two main things ready before testing, your documentation and your hardware samples. For documentation, you'll usually need a schematic, a block diagram, a bill of materials, product photos, and a user manual. Full certification may also require forms and labeling details. For hardware, send production representative units that are fully assembled, debugged, and programmed ready to run. No dev boards, no hand-soldered prototypes, and definitely no half-finished firmware. The lab needs to test your actual production product, not a prototype. Double check that your documentation matches your hardware and make sure the units are stable and reliable. Remember, the lab's job is to test emissions and not debug your hardware or your code. Step nine is complete the testing process. So once everything's in, the lab starts the actual test, usually radiated and conducted emissions. Full certification requires an accredited lab, like I've already mentioned, whereas SDOC doesn't as long as the testing's valid and properly documented. If you've done solid prep up front with good PCB design layout, you've had an expert design review and done pre-compliance testing, most products will pass certifications without any major problems. If something fails, though, don't panic. Just ask for details. Sometimes it's just a noisy cable or poor shielding, and a quick fix like a ferrite bead or a bypass capacitor can get you through. Some labs even let you tweak it right there and retest the same day, which really speeds up the process significantly. If not, you might need another session, but that doesn't mean starting over. The goal is simple. Walk into testing knowing that you'll pass. And if you follow these steps up front, you'll be in good shape and ready to pass. If you want to know exactly which certifications your product needs and what they're going to cost, you can use the certification estimator tool that I've built. And you'll also get a PDF checklist with all the FCC certification steps that I've outlined in this video. You can find the link in the description below or scan this QR code. All right, step number 10, certify and label your product. Once you pass testing, you're almost done. If you went through full FCC certification, you'll get a final report and your lab or certification body will submit it to the FCC. Once approved, you'll receive an FCC ID, 
which goes on your product label and in your user manual. But if you went through the simpler SDOC process, there's no FCC filing, there's no FCC ID needed. You just keep your test results and include the right compliance statement in your manual. You still have to meet all the rules. This isn't an escape from doing the necessary testing, but you don't need to submit anything to the FCC unless they ask for it later if there's a problem. Now, if you'd like help navigating this entire process from your first design decisions all the way to final certification, we can help you do that smoothly inside the Hardware Academy. And if you found this video helpful, check out this video here next where I share exactly how much you can expect to spend on certifications. Although you can also find that out by downloading the free tool that I've mentioned before.